Kenya, East Africa, a land rich in promise, yet a paradox of problems. The highland districts around Lake Victoria have the climate and land that should create a surplus of food in the area. Yet many residents are caught up in a poverty trap. After a hard year in the fields, the yields of maize on their small farms produce only enough for home consumption. We would spend a lot of money and you work the land and get very little out of it. You'd make very little money, yet you have farmed up to three acres. The low yields are primarily a result of poor soil. African soils are generally good. The problem is that their fertility has been depleted by farmers taking the two key nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, out with crop harvest and not being able to return them in sufficient quantities uh, through manures and fertilizers. Poor farmers can hardly be blamed for not rebuilding their soil. In inland Africa, the price of fertilizer is up to four times the world market price because of heavy transportation costs and very poor roads. We continue to advocate the use of nutrients of all kinds at the lowest possible cost. And we continue to advocate very strongly increased use of fertilizers in Africa. But there is a shortcut. The basic challenge of poor farmers is how to get nitrogen into their soil at a low cost. The irony is, nitrogen is all around them. We live in an atmosphere of 78% nitrogen, here, Africa, anywhere on our planet. But it's inert. It cannot be used. The World Agroforestry Center is working with local farmers to harvest the nitrogen from the air using legume trees that have the unusual capacity to transform inert nitrogen in the air to fertilizer nitrogen in the soil. Trees like Tephrosia, Suspania, Crapillaria, and Caliandra are planted in and around fields and grow extremely well, even in the dry season after the corn is harvested. They have very deep roots, so they can tap water from places that crops cannot and they grow very fast and really become nitrogen fertilizer factories, grabbing the nitrogen from the air. After a year or two years, depending where you are in Africa, they can add to the soil 100 to 200 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, which is the level of fertilizer used by maize farmers in Europe and the United States and developed countries. But they got it right there from the air at zero transportation cost. Compared to farms with depleted soil, these trees make a significant difference. Before, we used to plant maize or beans and get very little produce. But now, from one acre, you can get up to 15 bags of maize. You can't consume 15 bags. You sell some of it to get money you can use on your farm or pay school fees, and even buy yourself some clothes to wear. Some farmers are also using nutrient accumulating plants, like the Mexican sunflower, on the boundaries of their farms, that are especially helpful in high-value crops. This plant here is known as Tidonia diversifolia. The plant is rich in uh, those nutrients that most of the tropical soils are degraded in. And these include nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, calcium, etc. About three or four times a year, they can cut it and apply to their crops. It has been proved that it is especially useful in the production of high value crops like vegetables, tomatoes, etc. <laughs> For a long time, I was farming this land, but it was not producing much. It wasn't until the scientists from the World Agroforestry Center worked with us to improve our farming practices that things began to improve. Once a farmer has achieved basic food security for their family, 
they can begin to invest time and money into these higher value crops and even livestock. An added benefit of these nitrogen rich plants like Caliandra is they provide an abundant source of biomass for feeding cows. What we are trying to do is to look at how we can improve the quality of uh, the livestock feed. And we are using the fodder trees, this is Caliandra, Rukina and Mulberry to bridge the protein gap. Uh, these trees are drought tolerant, so during the dry period they still can produce the mulberries and um, uh, that means the farmers will continue producing milk. Having cows on the farm is good. The manure from the cow makes compost for the farm. You can get milk and cream and I can sell these for profit. The new income spreads throughout the whole community and has a profound effect on the quality of community life. Monica is secure enough in her income that she has adopted two children, orphans of the AIDS epidemic, and provides them with funds and food to get a proper education in the local schools. The schools, in return, are developing a program to provide a local market for area farmers. When I came to this school, the first thing I noticed was that the performance was very poor. The attention of the children was not there. Many of them were feeling how hungry they were and they were even thinking of when are they going to eat next. Realizing that the children must eat at least one good meal a day, the school began a lunch program in which the food was supplied by local farms. The effect on the individual child was quickly evident. Very soon you see a very big change in this child. He brightens up, he becomes very active, he participates in class, outside in the co-curricular activities. Because of the feeding program, uh, it didn't only benefit the children, it has also benefited the farmers. They now know that, uh, uh, okay, they'll grow more and uh, some of it they'll bring to school. We have good work that gives us a chance to be independent. It is hard work. We work from morning to evening. Collecting firewood has long been a burden of African women and children who must spend much of their day often walking great distances in search of this essential fuel. An added benefit of the legume trees is that they are an abundant source of firewood right on the farm. My life has changed. It's good. We don't sleep hungry anymore, and the food makes you strong with nutrients. And you can even see the children getting healthy and gaining weight. Ile kitu ambayo mimi nataka ni kufanya ni kwamba nataka nione shamba yangu imekaa na When I go home now, all I think about is how to improve my land so it can produce more. Kwa hivyo you see, I rely entirely for my income on what I can produce from my farm. And that is something I could never do before this technology was brought to us. With his new wealth, Harrison is investing in the community and has spent his own money to build this church. The key to unlocking this poverty trap lies in the soil itself. Farmers like Monica and Harrison demonstrate that once the economic engines of productive fields kick into gear, local people are willing and able to take responsibility for building community life. Getting out of, of the poverty trap basically involves 
empowering the communities to make their own decisions and their actions. I want others to benefit from this technology, to see my farm, and to see the fruits of using fallow. My desire is to work hard, plant fallow, and get a good harvest, so I can support myself, and even those coming after me can find a good farm that is productive. <laughs>